Well, chat GPT-5 is out and everybody thought it sucked. What happened? Well, welcome to Dave is Not AI, where we talk about the truth of AI and how to make it work for your enterprise. I'm Dave Linthicum, author, speaker, B-list geek. Let's get started. So we're probably a month uh, into chat GPT-5 at this point, and I'm not a news channel, so I'm not going to announce it uh, you know, the day it comes out. But I always like to look at what this technology does and how it impacts the enterprises that leverage it and then provide commentary around that. Because it's not only me reviewing the technology, and I learned, learned this in my you know, 20 plus years of reviewing enterprise technology, but it's how the enterprises are able to use it and the value they're able to obtain from it, which I think is a much more important issue right now. Well, ChatGPT5 was released and immediately people hated it. Uh, Reddit you know, threads were loaded with uh, you know, bad reviews of GPT5, you know, calling it kind of a failure, not necessarily living up to the expectations and the hype. And even I noticed that OpenAI is kind of moved on to the next version of their LLMs. Now, what's a shame here is these things are incredibly expensive to build and deploy. So it costs about 120 million bucks and, uh, you know, many, uh, you know, many megawatts of power to build one of these things. I don't know. I'm not sure why we need to have 150 of them out there, which we do right now, but we do. And all of these LLMs are trying to approve on upon what was part of the past LLM, in this case, Jack PT4, I think 4.1. So, it does some things well, but it does most things not so well. So let's talk about what those are. So the first huge problem, and I experienced this myself, is lack of factual accuracy and hallucinations. So ChatGPT5 continues to generate, you know, confidently worded but factually incorrect or entirely fabricated responses, which is erodes your user trust. Um, so you're trying to get something done that is fairly simple process instead of you um, doing it yourself manually, like creating a table of contents or an index or things like that, or cataloging articles you wrote or books you wrote in the past, um, it's able to provide responses and those responses seem to be true, but they're not, they're inaccurate. And obviously you can't detect there's an error is there uh, because it's so good at lying, I guess. And ultimately that's that steps up to bite you in the butt. So this issue is persistent because uh, the underlying language models are optimized for fluency and coherence, therefore not rigorous fact-checking or real-time internet access. So they don't necessarily know how to answer some questions in accurate ways, and they're able to, in essence, improvise the requests based on the way in which these things are structured. So what happened is bad data you know, has crept into many of these LLMs and they have mechanisms in there to spot the bad data and figure out statistical validations to erase, you know, many of these erroneous errors. For some reason in GPT-5, they didn't do uh, such a hot job in uh, making sure that those things were cleansed from the system or the mechanism was working correctly. And so therefore we're getting hallucinations. Not that the other models didn't provide hallucinations, they certainly did. But the fact of the matter is, is this thing is the most modern version of the LLM. And even though we know hallucinations are really kind of a fact of life when dealing with LLMs at some point in time, the number of hallucinations that GT GPT-5 is generating is concerning. So the next issue would be overly cautious censorship and refusal. So many users report frustration with ChatGPT-5's tendency to refuse answering or over-censoring even innocuous or academic topics. So this is a result of aggressive safety tuning and blanket guardrails implemented in response to prior misuse, which haven't been finally calibrated to distinguish context and intent, which is the core issue here. So in other words, LLMs can't really determine nuances. Uh, and so in other words, everything's going to be binary. And so in many instances, when people are asking legitimate questions, they're not getting answers from the LLM because of some restrictions that are being placed inside the LLM. You want to drive people nuts when using AI or any technology for that matter, start censoring the responses that they need. In many cases, it's going to hinder innovation 
and going to hinder utilization of LLMs such as GPT-5. And it became kind of a core issue here where it was recognized on the first day it was launched. And so people reported the fact that this LLM is so problematic, they had to go back to the previous LLM to get to accomplish many of this, this, the same tasks. And that's, chances are that's what you're doing today if you're using GPT or other LLMs. You're going back to another LLM besides GPT-5 because they're able to carry out your requests where some sort of a censorship limitation is being put on you when leveraging GPT-5. And people don't like that. So next would be lack of true reasoning and depth. Despite improvements, G chat GPT-5 often fails on tasks requiring multi-step logical reasoning or deep domain understanding, defaulting to super, uh, superficial summaries. So these weaknesses persist because language models still lack an underlying model of reasoning and can't access external computations or dynamic databases during the conversation. So we're unable to get to the depth of reasoning we need these models to, to work for us, to basically carry out and many of the requests that we have. And not being able to do that is going to put a limitation on the model where it's going to you know, basically push people off onto other models or perhaps not even using LLMs entire, entirely. So we have to be able to trust these models to provide the depth of reasoning to get to the solutions that we need. And if we can't do that, then they're not worth they're not worth using, as uh, many of the GPT-5 uh, users have, uh, you know, basically declared uh, since this thing came out. So we're also seeing a bigger trend, as we talked about in uh, this this uh, video here. The fact of the matter is, is many of the LLMs are going to be hitting a wall because they're out of data to train these systems. It's organically growing all the time. Obviously, the data that's put out on the Internet, videos, podcasts, uh, books, articles, things like that. And they can certainly train from those because those are basically organically growing where the first instances of LLMs basically learn from the entirety of all of the information that's being placed out on the open Internet. And so that's how it le learned and trained. And that's why it was so amazing to us when we first saw it, because it, it could access any piece of information, but not only that, respond to our requests and generate outputs that will be more useful to us. Uh, you know, uh, images, videos, text, things like that. And that really kind of was the genesis of the hype around LLMs. However, these days, they're running out of steam, not because I don't think there's a fire in the belly to innovate in this space, but they don't necessarily have the data growth that they had initially when they put these LLMs out. So therefore, the new versions of the LLMs, you know, such as GPT-5, are going to be much less impressive, and they're not necessarily going to move the needle. In fact, in the case of GPT-5, it looks like they didn't think through this as much as they should, and ultimately, it's causing some stagnant, you know, stag stagnation in terms of LLM growth. So where this is going to go is you're going to see the LLMs kind of level off in terms of the number of releases that we're going to see and the functionality within those releases. Because without the growth of data, without additional data to learn upon, they're just not going to be able to grow their capabilities. Now, we are going to be able to put features in them and hopefully, you know, uh, engineer these things to have, you know, fewer hallucinations and provide more accurate answers and the ability to, you know, have different augment, you know, augmented, you know, generation assistance and going out on the open web to check, you know, on the accuracy of what's being reported. I would love to have that. Uh, until then, these things aren't necessarily going to be as useful as we think they're going to be. We're still going to use them. They're still going to be bound to many of the tools and automation systems and office automation systems we leverage on a day-to-day -day basis. And they're still going to provide value, but we have to be careful with them because if they are going to provide inaccurate results, if they are going to get things wrong, if they're not going to reason the way we need them to reason, they're just not going to have the value we think they're going to have. And so it'd be interesting to see what the next version of GPT is, what it's able to do, and if many of the issues that we found with GPT-5 are going to be fixed. And I'll come back on here and let you know when that happens and what I think. 
Well, that's all I have for this week. Don't forget to like and subscribe and uh, check out my other YouTube channel, Cloud Computing Insider. Also check out my book by the same name. Also check out my InfoWorld blog and my 120 plus LinkedIn learning courses, including many AI courses. And I will see you next week. You guys stay very safe. Cheers.